Hello everyone. In this video we're going to look at code build output artifacts. So let's get to it. So I'm back in AWS console and I'm currently looking at my code build project. Now as you can see we have no artifacts specified for this code project as of yet. So now we're going to go ahead and doing that. But the first thing I want to do is I want to come over to S3 and I want to create a new bucket. And I'm going to name this bucket Angular DevOps DevOps Production Production and I'm going to call it Build Artifacts like that. And I'm just going to click Create because I'm not going to be doing anything else with the bucket. So I'll let that create. And if I come over and refresh now, we should have a new bucket. Cool, so this bucket is where I'm gonna store the output of the build, all right? So let's go about adding the output artifact for this build. And to do that, I'm gonna come over to this edit button here and click artifacts. Now, just so you know, you can actually add more than one artifact to a code build instance, but because we're just dealing with a simple Angular application here, I'm just going to be specifying one output artifact. Now, if you don't know what an artifact is, essentially an artifact is a set of, you know, releasable code or the output of a build, essentially, um, that you want to store somewhere, whether it be in S3 or you want to actually take the results of a build and maybe, you know, run it, store it somewhere else. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. The point is, is that when you do a build, you'll get a, a set of files, which we'll see in a minute how we can specify what files, but you get a set of files that are grouped together known as an artifact, okay? So the type of artifacts that we can have for uh, code build is essentially only Amazon S3. Now the bucket name I'm going to choose is the one we just created, so Angular DevOps Production Build Artifacts. So this is the bucket where the output of this build is going to go. Now for this name field, this is an optional field, and if I don't specify it, what essentially what's gonna happen is that the name or one of the folder paths will have the name of the project. However, just to show you what it looks like, I'm just gonna put deployable code, right? I'm not going to check semantic version at this point because it's a little bit more of a topic to do with buildspec.yaml files and I really can't be bothered doing it in this simple tutorial. Path, again, it's probably more important if you have multiple artifacts and you're wanting to put them in the same bucket, you may want to specify a different path for each artifact. So I'm not going to be touching that either. So leaving it optional means there'll be no path. For the namespace though, I am going to use the build ID. So what will happen is the build ID that we have for the build that's being run, well, the actual GUID that's registered against that build will be part of the folder path of the build. And this allows us to version our output, so to speak. You'll see it more in a moment. In terms of packaging, because we're doing dealing with Angular, I'm not going to zip it up, though technically you could zip it up, and then at a later date you could deploy it somewhere, you know, unzip and deploy it to another bucket or something like that. But I'm just going to leave it as unzip for now and just have the raw file show up. Now, let's remove artifact encryption. If I was deploying directly to the website bucket, I would want to have this checked because basically what this does is it encrypts the files that are stored in the bucket so that when you try to access it from the internet, you can't see it unless you're using a certain encryption key. All right. So just because we're storing it as artifacts, I'm going to leave that unchecked. Coming down to additional configuration, as you can see, because we're not um, ignoring encryption, we do use an encryption key this is part of something called KMS. I'm not gonna get into exactly how KMS works. You can work that out for yourself. But basically it's how AWS can manage different encryption keys. 
Down the case type, now case type is probably more important uh, when you're trying to case dependencies in your application. I never really do this just simply because if somebody changes the packages that NPM needs to install, then this case will not pick it up. So you can invalidate and do a bunch of all other things, but really I just leave this alone. So now I'm gonna click Update Artifacts. And now we've got our upload location for this code build. One more or two more things we need to do in order to get this working. The first one is we need to actually give permissions to deploy files to this new bucket. Remember when we created this code build instance, we had a service role. If I come down and click on this service role, it's going to open up the IAM management section with the role selected. I'm going to come inside the policy here and I'm going to click edit policy. Now just using the visual editor, I'm going to add a new permission. And the service I'm going to use is S3 because we're dealing with S3 buckets. Now in terms of the permission needed to write or to add artifacts to that bucket, all we really need to have is write permissions, but the right permission we need is put object. Okay, so that's all we need to take the files that are in our code build instance and upload them to our new S3 bucket. However, I am gonna restrict what resources that we can upload to, because at the moment we've got it set for all of them and we don't want that. So I'm gonna choose specific here and then I'm gonna click add ARN. Now, this ARN syntax is quite complicated and to be honest, I'm not gonna really mention too much about it until I get to cloud formation again but just know that there's this fancy path that can identify any resource. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna select the bucket name just like that. And for the objects, while well, I want all objects or any objects to be able to be put into this bucket, so I'm gonna click this any and that adds this star on the end here, okay? Now I'm gonna click add and then I'm gonna click review policy and go save changes. Now remove oldest non-default policy. Just leave versions to remove. I'm just gonna delete the version and save. You may not get that prompt because I've ran this before. Now I'm just gonna double check my policy here just to make sure I've got access to the things I want. And there is my put object and my new build artifact directory. So that seems to be all good. I'm gonna close that now. And I'm gonna also close this other IM tab and we'll come back to AWS developer tools. Uh, sorry, and go build, sorry. Now, this is all ready from a web console point of view. We have the where we're going to deploy the artifacts, but we haven't specified the what yet. And the what is done in the build spec.yaml file. So I'm gonna go over there now, and we're gonna write a little bit of syntax to tell our code build instance what to deploy. So I'm now looking at my build spec.yaml file, and what we're gonna do is directly under the phases section, I'm gonna create a new section called artifacts, All right? And basically an artifact has a collection of files, all right, and how we specify the files is basically as a list. Now, you could do a simple star star slash star, which means get me every single file in the entire project. Obviously, we don't want to do that because that would include all our source code and it would include all the node modules and all that other stuff, all right? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to actually change the directory to where we're going to start looking for files for. So to do that, we, we use a base directory property, and I'm gonna set this to the dist slash angular devops folder, all right? And basically what that's gonna do now is it's going to 
start looking from our dist angular devops folder over here all right so it's going to see these files now if i leave this as is for the moment it's actually going to include the angular devops folder as part of the files or as part of the structure right so we don't really want that we kind of just want the files that are inside that folder and we want that folder to be ignored so to do that all we have to do is type discard paths equals yes like that and that will now discard the angular dash devops folder and just grab these files inside of it now this would all work we get all of these files inside of the angular devops folder and that would be part of our artifact which would go to our artifact bucket but obviously you can see here we've got this third party licenses.txt do we really want that in our deployment probably not okay so the files we really want is anything that's js anything that's html anything that's css and the .ico file so what we can do as part of the files we can now change this to star.html for one and then we can keep doing this a few times until we've got all the files that we want so we need the .js, we can go star.css, and we can go, whoops, we can go star star star.ico, all right? And they're all the file types that we want. And this will get everything now inside the Angular DevOps folder, except for this third party licenses.txt file, because it's a text file, okay? So I'm going to save this now. I'm going to commit it to my Git branch, and then we'll see what happens with the build. So I'm back in the AWS console, and I'm looking at my build project. And as you can see down here now, we have a new build. Now, just so you know, GitHub has had some issues today. So I had to manually trigger this build myself, but normally this would have fired from a webhook, but I digress. If I come into the build now and I look at the state of the build, over here to the right hand side, we have output artifacts, right? And before we go there, I'm just gonna go, come down to phase details and you'll now see that upload artifacts still runs very, very quickly. It's still only like one second. So that's, that's pretty good considering it's going to S3. If I click on view artifacts now, it's gonna take me to S3, and it's gonna take me to basically the description of the, the new entry that we have inside our bucket. Now to come back up to S3, just so we can get a full understanding of the path, I'm gonna click on the Angular DevOps production build artifacts. And so here we've got a folder. Now this folder name here matches the build ID. So if I come back to the build, You'll see it'll start with a C A triple F, right? We we'll look at the name of this C A triple F. So that's where this ID comes from. I click inside this bucket. We get the name of that folder that we typed in. So deployable code. This folder will always be created regardless. Unfortunately, I would love to be able to use code build to deploy directly to my S3 bucket, but because of this functionality of creating a folder, I couldn't, we can't actually do that. So that's why I am currently pushing my artifacts to this other S3 bucket. If I click inside here, you'll see there's our files. Okay, so they're the files that we've built using the Angular CLI and doing a production build. And then we've specified those files to show up in our output artifact, which means they show up in this directory here. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. In the next video, we're going to go back a little step. Instead of worrying about actual building and getting code and all that, I'm going to look at showing you guys how to run unit tests. So I'll see you in the next video.